Hi guys, this is teacher Joshua from Your Artist Studio and today we're gonna do a plein air painting. By the way, I'm that guy standing there wearing blue and orange stripes. So I'm just the artist you're gonna do for this uh, video tutorial. So plain air painting little means painting outdoor or getting the impression of daylight. So here I'm gonna teach you how to prepare starting from sketching up until to your final painting. So I'm gonna discuss on how to use them and to learn more about how to paint outdoor. Luckily I have a, a park or a, a playground outside of my house. To, to use as the subject of my painting. So this is like uh, an old uh, playground that I used to play when I was a kid. So there's a lot of interesting history around my neighbors and my playmates. And I see that this swing looks interesting. So I'm gonna pick this as the, as the focal point or the subject of my painting. Okay, so let's start uh, sketching and to draw. First off, let's start with thumbnail sketches. So thumbnail sketches are quick sketches or quick drawings for you to, to see the different angles of your drawing. It does also help you to make different options or different kinds of uh, look onto your drawing. Because thumbnails help you to study and to understand more about your subject. Because drawing is not just a one-time picture you can make a multiple series and to see that there are a lot of potential you can make from your drawing because it will help you to see different perspective in just one subject that's what makes thumbnail very unique some artists do uh, right away start with the painting and that's okay in in most of us but if you're a, a starter or you're making a landscape or in a plain air painting, it's very important to, to look around because there's a lot of inter interesting things that you can see around the, on the drawing. There are parts that you can include, there are parts that you can exclude. Like in the first thumbnail, I exclude the background and make the, the subject as the main focal point. That's why I made the, the swing bigger and zoom in. Zoom in. While the second thumbnail, which uh, I see I like it, I zoom out and I include the background, especially the trees, the grasses, and the houses because it helps to, to add more character into the subject. And then my third one, I'm still starting here. So, you, so here in your thumbnail, it doesn't have to be that perfect. You just have to place the right shapes for each part, okay? So you have to be really quick and focus onto your drawing. It's just like a, an, in, and like an intuition in drawing. Let's play along with your thumbnail. If you're satisfied with, with your thumbnail, I want you to pick one that you find it interesting and then use that as a reference for your next step, which is sketching. Now, for sketching, Start first with the big shapes because the big shape will help you to maximize or to max out the space in between because if you don't start with, uh, with big shapes, it'll be hard for you to place and to get the right angles because like a building, you have to start first with the big structure before you put the, the rooms and foundations and the furniture inside the structure. Same as it drawing, the details depends on the on the big shape that you draw because they are like the the whole body and the details are like decorations. So here, I first draw the big rectangle at the bottom or this slanted rectangle or, or a really tilted one, and I use it as a reference as a ground to draw the pegs and the legs of the swing because without it I'll be confused on how to tilt and to get the right view for the for the swing. Next, after you place your rectangle at the bottom, 
I can uh, attach more smaller details and more and make the drawing more uh, c clear and more recognizable as a swing. And, and while sketching, I want you to move back and to see if you got the right angles. Okay? And if it's not right for you, you can adjust it and put a smaller details and erase all the old lines. Okay. When handling your pencil, make sure you're moving your pencil lightly. Apply a little bit of pressure so that you can draw the lines lightly. Because if you draw your lines hard, it'll be really difficult or challenging for you to, to correct it. Because pressing your pencil a little bit harder will transfer the graphite onto it. So you have to be like a gentle, imagine like the Imagine like your pencil is like a feather, yeah, because you have to sketch it uh, softly. They have like a minimal lines because when you paint it, you can see there are recognizable lines or visible lines from your sketch because sometimes paint are transparent and there are possibilities that pen pencil will sit through onto your drawing. And here I'm putting details, bigger shapes for the background like the like the benches near near trees and then clarifying the details at the back of your swing here i'm in the left side trying to figure out how to draw the slide back at the background and you see that I'm aligning it to the to this diagonal line and this horizon line that we draw earlier. And here I'm drawing the like the body of the slide, attaching it. And make it in a more three-dimensional shape. Get get it. It's kind of flat at first because the view of the of the slide from my from my from where I'm standing is a bit flat. I'm just drawing the side view. Okay? And then also the bottom view. And we're just getting the general shape and the platform at the top. And a little bit of the stairs here to the left. And here, getting the angles right. Say the this uh, angle is the same as with the swing, so I have to align it, or else it doesn't agree with the uh, with the view. And that's why it's. The diagonal line aligns to your to your swing and slide, and then holding the the bars at the top, sketching lightly, very light. At first, it looks a little bit dark, but it's the light that I can do. If I draw it too light, probably you won't see on the screen. And now I'm gonna draw the tree here at the top of your swing. I draw the, the branches, like the, the overall shape, the top, middle. Not that detailed, I'm just gonna put like a small gestures and I could put more details when I paint. And attaching here the branches. And extend it on more intuitive branches because the branch is too complex, but you can make your own branches to have your your in Duration. Not too detailed, just drawing. And in the roof here at the side. And it's fine. If you're satisfied with the amount of details and got the light of your drawing, we can now start preparing our painting materials. For plain air painting, I usually use squash because squash is really a forgiving medium. Like watercolor, you only need water and watercolor brushes. Squash is like poster paint. The it's a matte finish paint, and you can make you can thin it down with water to make it uh, a little bit transparent. Unlike with watercolor, you need to use a lot of water and lay it down transparently. For gouache, you can use it only the paint. You can add a little bit of water. To make it loose, I like it because it makes the the work more uh, opaque, 
and more like a like an illustrative look. So it's my own preference in using for paint here. I for paint I usually use four kinds of color: the white, yellow, red, and blue, because these colors is enough for me to to play and to mix different colors because these are your primary colors. In primary colors are like the like the uh, like like the mother and father of colors you can mix them together to create subtle colors and, and you see i preparing my my paint for the for the background and the crown because i don't use primary primary for the for the painting you have to mix your own color yeah, because in the picture you can see like a really saturated red you all see green so you have to mix your own green using the primaries and here I'm mixing very well and testing the color onto the paper to see if it's green enough and it's not good enough so I'm gonna mix another one, another batch I mean here I make it faster for it get the green okay. so mix, mixing takes time and that's good because the most important in painting is to get the the colors it takes time like in, in most oil painters they take time mixing well in their paint to getting the right values or the right shade for it so here i'm filling out the the big shape at the bottom of my swing i'm just filling out with big shapes so i'm not that focused on on applying details i'm just masking out all the all the empty shapes yeah because I'm just still laying down all the colors yeah just like just like same as with drawing mask out everything first like because that's a big shape just carefully mask out the colors for the ground but you have to be really attent attentive also with the tight corners because if you call it everything, you get confused which part are, are the swings and which part are the are the background. So I'm just asking out which parts are I want to have a, a green color. So I'm just placing the colors rightly, and I put I'm putting a lot of water, and so so that I could move the the paint freely. But if I add water, it, the colors become smoothly but transparent I didn't start with with opaque colors because it, I get I can't get the the lightness of the color because if it stay opaque it's too dark so if it's too dark I have to put a lot of white and I because if I put a lot of white the work will look too chalky so I have to be really careful with the color yeah, because the same as with watercolor, you just don't start with a thick paste of paint. Try to moderate it. Okay. Build up, build up with layers with layers. Because if you use just uh, opaque colors, the colors will look flat. There's no uh, lightness into it, unless it, you want like that kind of uh, painting. But here, I want to get the. The movement of light so by getting the lightness or the light of the paper it would give like a luminosity or or the movement of the light and now i'm putting like a yellowish green onto the ground and to brighten up the the the, the grasses here I'm turning opaque to opaque paint with the ground using a yellowish green and getting the right shape of the color. So here I'm turning the ground from brown, from the brownish green into a yellowish green. It's laying the color flat. Because at first I, I can't get the, the right shade so I could put more layers of paint. And that's the beauty of of painting you can change the colors 
by layers by putting paint at the top and then the painting at the bottom will still still sit true but it adds to the to the depth of your colors that you put and after you fill up the the shapes of your color and fill it out it, it will look like this and so i'm put the the big shapes already and fill out the background floor and after you fill up the background the floor all the big you can put like smaller details like here i'm putting the the details of the grasses with dark greens and then some blue greens to complement the the shades of the of the ground so i just carefully putting ground in my part so for foliage, I use, use round brushes. These round brushes are, have like a fine tip point, just like the, the grasses. So carefully painting here in the ground. And just mix the, the bluish green and then some warm greens. And putting the dark greens also. But it, this one looks a like grayish green. So there's a lot of kinds of green, so try to experiment it with your paint. So just carefully looking paint and get getting the right shade. And for details, I don't hurry too much in putting them. I just get the the right direction of the grasses. And here it's much easier to put details because you have a color at the back. So you're just applying decorations. So I don't have to worry to, to to look everything or to mass out everything because I already done it. So I'm just putting like the details at the top. Mm -hmm. I'm still missing with the with the one seat of your swing, yeah, because it has like a different color. I haven't mixed it yet. And now I'm mixing my green. Mix it very well. And then putting some rocks, some brownish colors and grays. And just carefully putting details. I'm kind of, it's I'm slowing down because I'm looking it clearly. First, I'm putting in more transparent paint. I don't need to hurry in painting. And putting grass. Artists use usually use watercolor in plain air paint because it's really care. You can easily carry it with uh, with the with the paint brush, watercolor brush. And it's easy to clean, unlike with what, unlike with oil paint, that you need to have like a cleaner. But here you can clean your your tools just what with using water, same as with wash. Yeah, uh, for oil paint you need a lot of setup for the. For the plain area here is just get uh, rags and uh, water and some paint it, it's easy for you to match and it's easy to manage your your, your plain area session putting a lot of details here again nicely putting details Once you build up a lot of layers, you're gonna get like a, a much richer and darker color. You see that there are shadows now in the, the grass, more details, and more subtle changes of the color. And that that's how I like with the with gouache painting. Starting first with the light, and once you build up with darker layers, the color becomes more richer and more uh, realistic in the in the in the environment you copy and in terms of brushes I always uh, usually keep with large brushes with flat brushes and round brushes for a round brush I use it for details and for flat brushes I use for washing or to to flat out the colors and well, the work is starting to look more vibrant and now I'm mixing paint for the for the swing and then 
for the grass next to the swing and putting a little bit of highlights like a yellowish green and masking out the remaining empty space of the background and I want to highlight that yellowish side of the peg swing putting more colors mm -hmm. yellowish colors And then try to boost the color top because it feels a little bit dark and then turn it a little bit yellowish. And now I'm gonna put the, the colors for this ring, mixing it very well. And then the greens of the grass at the background. I really like uh, focusing on the grass because the grass makes the, the painting come together. Brighten it up. I have to always emphasize it. I don't know. I really like how the grass moves into the the painting. It it combines them together. It makes the the work more compact. So for plain, I always prepare a lot of brushes. Okay, you have to your brushes for your details and brushes for the for the broader colors. And then once you have those brushes, it's easy for you to organize the colors you're gonna put. And now, I'm putting the colors for your swing. I'm putting like a, a magenta reddish color. And then carefully filling out the rectangle. Okay, not too hurry. Just relax and paint it steady. And just turn it up a little bit more. Just filling out the rectangles. I'm just using a, a round brush because it has a fine tip point to fill it out. At first, it uh, it's uh, transparent because I put a lot of water. But I can, can build it up with a much thicker color. And once you fill out all the paints with the remaining details, you have a finished work. I'm very happy about the painting with the amount of details, especially with the grass, that makes the structure pops out and complements with the background. Blend air paint is not that hard. Just keep on doing and practicing with your color mixing in your drawing. And again, this is teacher Joshua from Yarty Sujo. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram and check out our sample works. Bye!